Okay, thanks again everyone for being here tonight. Um, I am privileged to have one of our wonderful members and someone who's helped my husband and I in our, our enterprises to get our stuff in order uh, because our children don't want to hear any excuses 30 years from now, 40 years from now. So we're grateful <laughs> to have Mr. Rob Roy Wiley of Smart Plan Investing uh, with us. So I'm going to read a little bit about Rob Roy, but more so share, you know, <laughs> my experience. I feel like that means a lot more than a bio that you're going to read on an agenda. Although this, this adds to professionalism because some of you would come for me if I didn't have this. Um, <laughs> Rob Roy Wiley is a financial advisor at Smart Plan Investing. Um, and owner as well. A smart Plan is a family-owned CPA and advisory firm, um, firm, firms, which has been in business. I'm going to restart that because we are recording. Smart. <laughs> Rob Roy Wiley is a financial advisor at Smart Plan Investing. Smart Plan is a family-owned CPA and advisory firm, which has been in business for over 25 years. Rob Roy and his accounting team empower entrepreneurs in helping them leverage their finances for growth. He also works individually with clients on recognizing behaviors that can be detrimental to their portfolio and helps the older generation also share their wisdom uh, with the upcoming generation as well. So Rob Roy also has a BBA in finance from Georgia State University. And you have to know the background, right? Who's this guy telling me about finance? He has no bad financial background and is a registered investment advisor. Welcome, Rob Roy. Thank you, Lauren. <laughs> wow, that's a long intro. No, <laughs> no I appreciate that. Um, I'm also a business exit planning strategist, along with being an investor coach. So I work with business owners, such as Lauren, and helping them actually um, uh, close their financial asset gap to where they're at now, to where they want to be when they actually transition out of their business, because fact remains that 100% of business owners will exit out of their business. So the business owners who work with me, they want to take some control in how that exit actually happens. And so I also work with them on analyzing their value drivers in their company, so what are those components that will actually transfer the business, whether it's being sold to a third party, or transition to a family member, or to a key employee. And then also deal with the business continuity side if the owner uh, involuntarily exits out of the business, as we so eloquently put it. <laughs> Uh, so we work on that, work on that, and so my goal is to help business owners have the freedom to choose and to be able to architect their lifestyle that the way that they want. Too. Thank you, Mr. Wiley. You're welcome. <laughs> now, if you're like me, you know we're like, oh yeah, we're going to make some money and figure this this business thing out. But really, the financial world can be uh, a big haze to a lot of us in terms of understanding value drivers return, true returns on investments, analyzing our business for profit, and of course the whole exit strategy. We think it's a paragraph in a business plan, and many of us aren't even doing uh, or reevaluating our business plan as often as we really should be. And so um, when we met with Rob Roy, we knew it was important for us to take care of something like this now rather than later. And so Rob Roy, you helped me to explain a lot of different, uh, or help me to understand, I should say, a lot of different terminology that you use. Um, and uh, so I know most of us in here all, of course, know the terminology. So this is more for me than for you guys. But when you say mind the gap, if, if you don't mind saying that area again, what do you mean by that phrase when you say mind the gap? Well, what I mean by mind the gap is um, where the owner is presently financially, what resources that they have, and what they're going to need post-exit business life. So it can be a serial entrepreneur planning their next uh, enterprise and figuring out how much they're going to need or uh, post in exit life being retirement later on in life. Um, there's usually a gap 
And so we have to implement a plan and steps because it can take anywhere from three, five, to seven, or 10 years, depending on when the owner actually wants to transition the business. Thank you. Uh, what is one constant fact in the work that you do? Uh, I, I, I did mention this at the beginning, that 100% of business owners will exit out of their business. One way or another. As, a, as my friend Roxanne says, she says it'll either be cash out, sell out, or peace out. No. <laughs> That's good. But because of that, you might as well take a plan ahead of time. Uh, now, what is, you mentioned beforehand, not here, but business owner Nirvana. Uh -huh. Do you mind talking a little bit about that to the group? Well, Business owner nirvana is basically when the business operates actually without the owner. Basically, the owner becomes inconsequential. So essentially, they can take a month, six months, a year, they can go away, and their business is still uh, producing, growing, and um, has accruing more value. So that is one of the key components, especially when you're transitioning a business that the business can operate and function without the owner. Basically, the owner becomes inconsequential. That actually should be the goal of every business owner. It's not a scary thing, right? I think a lot of us want to be so critical to our business. When, when we can release the reins of control and recognize that a true business is not relying on a personality or individual, when you look from when you jump from self-employed or owning your own job into having a true business, you can leave and be able to generate more profits sometimes and not have your business up because you stepped away. And so a lot of that requires certain structures in place that I know you also help entrepreneurs do in certain systems. So thank you for explaining that. <clears throat> now, what should a client, like myself, or someone <laughs> like that, expect on an initial meeting? Initial meeting is all about you. What your priorities are, uh, what your goals are, um, answering a lot of questions. Um, All right, and I define the term, actually before we go there, I wanted to ask you about um, the assess and the initial meeting. And I know um, I was pleasantly surprised in the process just about how uh, how much value you gave before we had to kind of think, you know. And so I wanted you to talk a little bit about complementary assessments and really um, determining the needs of what each client has before you give them kind of a sticker. Um, yeah. A sticker solution to their issues. I do a, a complimentary actually value driver assessment. So it's the owner actually answering 12 questions and rating on a scale of importance to non important. And it comes out in this colorful pie chart. <laughs> and it really shows uh, what. The priorities are of the owner, and also based on like what they have involved already in the business, but what other components are critical to that they need to look at and institute into the business. Uh, and as many as I have done, uh, tried to see if there was any type of correlation. No, every business owner has different priorities, um, and their their value the value drivers those components are are different, useful. Value drivers, would you mind to, uh, explaining that term? Oh, okay. I know, lots of terminology. Um, value drivers are those components that are actually behind the scenes. Um, they don't really deal with the brand, but they deal with the process, the procedures, your management team, um, what the owner holds uh, value, um, and it could be a combination your security, how you manage data, all of, all of that. There's about at least 17 or 18 different components. Not every business has to, or not has to institute, but not everything is, is always applicable to them. But there are those that are um, critical that when you're transitioning the business, uh, in the case of like, if you're selling it to a third party, 
uh, these days, private equity firms, and they want to know that the business will operate by. They don't want to come in and manage it. Just want to make money. That's good because so often we're caught in the weeds. I don't know if you all can relate, uh, but we're caught so much sometimes in the daily weeds and the management of our business between getting new customers or production, marketing, and very seldom do we work on the business itself. We're so busy working in the business that we don't pull away from the trees and really we are able to develop intelligently our business from a strategic standpoint. And we wonder, how are we here, the same place where you were, we haven't made much traction as we did a couple of years before because there are these drivers that sometimes we're not even aware of that are having an effect on our business or not having the desired effect on our business. And uh, just a couple more questions for you. How does planning your business strategy really help with the competitive advantage? <laughs> because you know we're thinking, I'm gonna go and do an exit strategy. No, I probably need to go and find the next customer. Would you mind explaining that a little bit? Well, it actually helps the owner have like a 30,000 foot view over their business. So when they're looking at when they want to exit and uh, closing that financial asset gap and the value drivers in their business, they're actually fine-tuning what specific, um, for growth, there's a lot of times they have to acquire another company. So what type of company do they want to acquire? The type of um, customer, clients uh, that they don't have, that they want to get. Um, it can also help them actually start to replace themselves as far as what responsibilities can I give to somebody else, and what do I really want to concentrate on? So it's the whole 80-20 Pareto rule that where 20% uh, of your efforts gives you 80% of your results. Yeah, you went a lot deeper into exit strategy that, exit strategy planning, excuse me, that um, I think I, I've never gone into a couple of business plans. I can but, talk about it for days. Yeah, so. <laughs> No, that's good. Thank you. Thank you for going into that because I don't think we, I personally haven't looked at the breadth of all of that in my own just two, three paragraphs of business exit planning. All right. So um, on to number, the next question here I have for you. As a business owner, I know that I enjoy the work that I do. Um, and if I don't ever plan on quote unquote exiting or retiring, right, why would someone like me? want to work with you. Uh, Actually, I had this question come up. I have, a, I have a, a, a new client out in, actually, Texas. They actually are a craft beer company. And the owner says to me, I don't really want to ever leave my business. He said, well, do you ever want to take six months or maybe a year off? Or do you think one day you might want to wake up, you wake up and you're like, I want to go hike somewhere or go to a far off island for a while, at least to have the option. Um, that's, that's what it really uh, explained to clients, that it gives you the options. You don't, you don't want to wake up one day and go, well, I'm still tied to this business. I really want to do something else. Thank you. And the fact is, well, honey, you kind of will in our business at some point. Yeah. I'm going to get a check for that later, guys. In the, <laughs> in the event that an owner involuntarily exits out of his company, do you have a strategy to help that business? Yes. Involuntary deaths. Yeah. Involuntary really means a death. Um, and it can have really serious consequences on, on a business. So we have a whole package that we do to help um, the business communicate on that transition if that happens with the vendors, their employees, their clients. Um, it's a manual where it's very detailed about how the business owner um, has put, who, who, he, who they have put in charge, um, who uh, loans, all, 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 all sorts of all pertinent stuff uh, to, the, to the business. 
And then we have, we do have a strategy for uh, solo businesses that are service, more service oriented, where the owner, um, the service that they perform, um, if they're gone, it vanishes. So we do have a strategy to help uh, that, which is kind of unique. Um, and do offer working in uh, payment and buy salary into the business continuity um, in the case of partners or um, somebody who is interested in uh, purchasing the business. Thank you. It's funny, Lucia. We started talking about some of the benefits that are available to entrepreneurs like solo 401k. I mean, that was the one thing that I enjoyed about the corporate position I had in my past life was just literally having your benefit in your 401k, but knowing that you can have that as an entrepreneur, it was something I completely was just unaware of. I was just ignorant of that fact. So, Robert, I want to thank you, and everyone, thank you so much for being engaged with what was discussed this evening. We still have a lot of great celebrating and meeting to do, uh, but Robert, you have a couple, you have one event coming up next month. I would love for you to, is it no, two months actually, right? In March. March. Um, and I'd love for you to share a little bit about that. And if there's anything else, contact-wise, how someone can reach you. Um, and then we will close out this segment and keep the fun going. Uh, March 22nd or 23rd is Friday. I'm doing a workshop with uh, Ro Roxanne Hunt, 20, 22nd, uh, with Roxanne Smithers, uh, Smithers, Umi and Wabo, who she is a business attorney and I are going to, uh, it's titled The Graceful Exit, so we are going to discuss um, financial management and uh, all the three scenarios, cash out, peace out, or sell out, and what happens. It's uh, at the City Club of Buckhead, it's a breakfast, it's $30, uh, it's from like 8 to 10 a.m. March 23rd at 8.30 a.m., 8 a.m., yeah. at 8 a.m., and probably, you know, feel free to reach out to him if you'd like to make sure to attend the event. You can just register through a link for it. Um, and if you guys have any other questions for Robert, of course, he's here, um, and he'll be here for a couple more minutes, not very long, so please feel free to pull him aside before he has to leave. Uh, but I want to have the last kind of formal uh, spiel on the mic just to thank you guys so much for coming out tonight. The party's not over. We still have another hour before they kick us out of this place. And so please continue to eat, enjoy, drink with beers on tap, of course, here. And again, I just want to give a quick shout out to all of our sponsors in the room. We thank you guys so much. To Greer of Spirited Event Group, thank you for hosting us and partnering with us on this event. And of course, to Carly and the incredible staff here at Second Self Beer Company, thank you. Um, shout out to Alcohol Heroes Bartending and uh, Beverage Catering Services for being our wonderful sponsor for the evening as well. Anointed Photography and Video holding it down, thank you. Uh, Epic Events and Catering for the catering for the delicious bites that we've had here. Uh, Euphoric Vibrations Entertainment, Mr. Calvin Benjamin. Uh, of course, the music, the sound, lighting, entertainment. We love having Calvin as a member and partnered with us on so many great events. We love your professionalism and the level to which he puts an event on. Um, ProStar 7, our tech experts in the house. And of course, Robot Booth, who we're so honored to have as a collaborator. Thank you for coming through. I had the, we had the bosses. Shelly, well, thank you. <laughs> we appreciate you guys and we love your team. So thank you again for reaching out. And Smart Plan Investing, Mr. Robert Wiley, thank you for your part in your wisdom. And if you can, of course, connect with him afterwards, that'll be great. He's heading out soon. And I'm Lauren Hines for Atlanta Wedding and Event Professionals. And the podcast, newly launched, I Did It My Way. If you haven't had a chance to subscribe to the podcast, we are on iTunes. Or, of course, those who are Apple users, if you are a joy lover, there's We Love You Guys, too. We're on Stitcher. For the podcast, I did it my way. All right, where you hear the story and the and the dramas, the ups and the downs of leading entrepreneurs and tastemakers. They let you into the background of their journey, how they did it, to give you what you need to go one more day. So thank you very much, Robert. We'll be posting this on the podcast soon. Too.